I guess the major news in the UK for the most part, things have been, you know, uh, blowing up the timeline, heating up the airwaves and causing debate and controversy all over the nation are these new COVID-19 um, restrictions that have hit most of the, U well, the UK, Scotland and Wales for the most part. And of course, I'm just going to focus on the UK for now because that's where I'm at. But yeah, man, it's been a bit of a... It's been a bit of a tough pill to swallow for some people. I think, like I've mentioned and maybe in a few other shows, I still get the feeling, maybe not so much now because, you know, of course the new restrictions have come into place or have been, you know, they've been outlined. But I think in the beginning or maybe during the summer, I still had this impression that a lot of people had a, f had a lot of people were kind of holding out hope that number one, we'd get a vaccine by the end of the year or that somehow we'd get back to normal by the end of the year. I don't know why it, why they had that expectation. Maybe it was just you know trying to be optimistic maybe they had other bits of information but whatever it is i always had that feeling because of course you know walking around the area going about my everyday life going to do some food shopping and just hanging about you'd see people kind of not really acting as if like there's a global pandemic happening at the moment right sort of like just living life as they're living it and most of it if anything isn't the fault of the people it's mostly the fault of the government right the leadership on the top has been pretty wishy-washy a bit hands-offy you know what was that phrase they used about um letting a great british public use their common sense or something along those lines right just kind of um it's, if anything what's that term that you call it it's like you are deny it's like plausible deniability in some way shape or form in it right instead of kind of being forceful with the rules or strict with it they'd rather be hands off so that if anything does go wrong you can't exactly blame them because they kind of gave you some vague general sort of guidelines and you know if anything goes untoward then you know it isn't for them to uh be pulled up on about it but I kind of got that feeling, but I think now, obviously, with these new restrictions updates, um, some really, really tough ones, uh, ones that kind of probably need to have happened anyway, in order to kind of get things back up to normal. But it's just part of me thinks, God damn it, man, if only the government would have been this forceful, would have been this forthright, would have been this direct, would have been this blunt and honest about the situation in the beginning, we would have been in a far better place instead of trying to, because I that's what happened, right? If anything, we got the we got the kind of political version of what Trump did when Trump tried to like say, hey, I'm going to be positive. I'm, you know, here's what you mentioned to Bob Woodward for that book that's got out at the moment called Rage or something, right? He kind of leaked that he was, he purposely tried to downplay the virus, which, you know, I think most leaders should try to remain calm and not, you know, yeah, you, you sh I, I think even, even if you hate Trump, you can understand his rationale, but he went too he went like crazy in terms of like in how he responded in public right he would always dismiss it say it's a china problem say it's no issue it'd go away but privately he knew how deep of an issue it was but he was trying to remain calm but he didn't really you know he didn't really um he didn't really do that right he didn't really achieve that but i think the uk government did right but they did really well in that regard dumb, dumbing down the virus telling people to get back to work telling people to go on holiday telling kids to go back to school which kind of again these are all things that are probably crucial in terms of the wellness and you know whatever the economy of our country blah 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 but these things together in tandem back to back just kind of sent the wrong message it made it seem as if like we were doing well when we weren't then I remember there was a period where people were going on summer holidays and shit. And then you looked at anything, you thought to yourself, especially if you were going on these holidays, you think to yourself, hold on, why are we going on holidays in countries that have been in far worse positions than us are not? And they had to stay in place. It didn't make any sense really, in it? And then I guess some of these tech, business techno parties started popping up in places. And just it just kind of left a little bad taste in their mouth, innit? it? It kind of made, it, no, it just made you confused. So I guess these restrictions are meant to clear up some of that confusion in the UK. So this headline from the BBC says, the coronavirus new COVID restrictions could last up to six months which again was the that was the big thing that kind of you know uh triggered the timeline for me I'm, i don't mind i'd rather I, I don't care how long it takes i just want i just want it to take as long as it takes so that we can get back to normal i'm on that but of course i wouldn't want to be you know and living under these restrictions for like you know two years and shit or five whatever it may be but however long it takes for us to just to get this done so that we can return to normal life i'm for um and i'm not ignorant enough to like believe that somehow we we're going to sort this out in a month or two it's not gonna happen because we had a we had nearly a year to sort it out we didn't so it is what it is so this is from bbc it says the following it says the uk has reached a perilous turning point prime minister boris johnson has said as he set out a raft of new coronavirus restrictions shop staff will have to wear face masks and weddings will have to be limited to maximum 15 people under the new rules fines for breaking the rules on law 
clothes on gatherings and not wearing a mask will increase 200 pound again very clear warnings for the things that you're meant not meant to do but again I, I just wish this would happen before right in the beginning with all this nonsense just do it anyway he also warned a significantly greater restrictions could come if necessary right again clear warnings telling you what it's all about uh, mr johnson said similar steps would be taken across the uk after he met with the leaders of scotland wales and northern ireland on tuesday morning like england scotland's first minister nicola sturgeon also announced a 20, uh, 10 o'clock curfew for hospitality businesses the same measure is also set to come into force in wales of course the hospitality thing i'm still not i'm dubious about i, I mentioned previously that guy called Jonathan Downey, who I follow on Twitter, actually made a comment that supposedly only 5% of COVID cases have, have uh, come from the hospitality industry. So this myth that supposedly hospitality industry is a place that's sort of like sparking a virus isn't true. Now, to give the government some slack, I don't think they're saying that by closing the pubs earlier. I just think they're just trying to avoid the dreaded mingling, right? That's what they want to avoid. Um, and they kind of think if they kind of get pubs out of the way, it will effectively keep people indoors. because that's part of the issue too right because we head into the winter months most of the people that i've listened to online especially the pub owners and the landlords and all that sort of stuff um they've they've kind of said that their best business happens in the winter especially in the uk i guess winter months people want to be indoors next to a uh you know a, a fake log cabin and drinking their beers you know having a bit of chit chat with their friends so if they limit the hours or they you know even just by one hour because you know pubs in the uk usually in smaller towns close by 11 anyway so if they limit by one hour it sort of puts it sort of makes it might as well be nine by that time in it because most people will probably leave before 10 anyway or the, the, the power will start to thin out blah 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 so it's a good way to sort of like um program the population not to be outdoors so i think that's the probably the main point of it it's not so much that oh we're going to stop the pubs from opening later because we're fearing that they're spreading the virus. It's more so we just don't want people to be out full stop. So if we limit their business hours, it's going to put people put in people's head that, hey, we can't really go anywhere. And then, of course, during the winter months, you can't do park drinks anymore. You can't go to bloody, you know, some trendy park somewhere with your, you know, double sole shoes and your, you know, and rolling your bloody, you know, um, <laughs> rolling your cigarettes and stuff you can't do that in the winter months you kind of have to be indoors house parties whatever it may be so if they're limiting the amount of people you can meet and they're also limiting the amount of hours the pubs are open for it sort of cuts out a huge chunk of the people that are going out in my opinion it continues to say mrs mr sorry miss sturgeon went further than england on restrictions banning the visit visiting of other household indoors wow it comes after the number of uk cases rose to 4926 on tuesday with the deaths increasing by phase seven uh, speaking in the house of commons the prime minister told the mp he was always knew that while we might have driven the virus into the retreat the prospect of going the second wave was real i'm sorry that as in spain france and many other countries we've reached a perilous turning point and again like those other countries though because i think he mentioned something about oh the uk is free and we got free speech and blah, blah, blah. but basically they did the look they did a proper lockdown and they still got a second spike so we were always destined to get one but the difference is that they were used to already obeying the rules in some extent don't get me wrong they did obviously skirt some rules but they had something in place where they knew what the they knew how harsh the measure the restrictions could get so once stuff kind of started to reopen again they were well behaved right that's the issue so part of the problem you think in the uk is that if they did reopen stuff like people would go absolutely nuts and part of my fear actually when they did introduce new restrictions was that they were going to introduce them on a monday and then that would have meant the weekend coming up would have been just people just getting absolutely hammered but instead they they were they kind of used their brains and they decided to implement the changes on a thursday which kind of gives you know the hospitality industry a time to sort of adjust i guess the new settings and it gives people the time to adjust as well to the new rule change it continues so mr johnson said the new rules were carefully judged to mac to achieve the maximum reduction in the r number which measures how quickly the virus is spreading while causing the minimum um, damage to lives and livelihood but he said this was wait by no means a return to the full lockdown in march and then we continued that by looking at a video a quick recap of Boris johnson talking about it or addressing the nation via the guardian we must take action now i know that we can succeed because we have succeeded before. When the sickness took hold in this country in March, we pulled together in a spirit of national sacrifice and- Not, not much though. It lasted like two weeks. After that, people were just like doing what they wanted to do. And that's the thing as well, I think is another um, 
misnomer. It's as if people are, I don't know misnomer. Um, yeah, because he uses this term about um, what's that? What's that term? It's some flipping English folklore thing that he always keeps saying, right? What is it about? Something stitching a nine, bloody blah, blah blah, whatever that term he does, right? It's some Shakespearean thing he's always talking about, right? And it's sort of like a a proverb for not being lazy and kind of addressing the issue now before the issue gets bigger, blah blah blah. But I don't really think it's a laziness thing. People somehow think it's that people are not bothered to put masks on or not bothered to go and social distance. It's not that. I think people are just, some people have made a conscious decision that they don't think is as serious as a threat and they'd much rather take their chances to live their life and go about their, every, go about life every, you know, go about their everyday life and continue, you know, trying to make the best of it than live in quote unquote fear. I think that's what it is. It's just, ide- it's just a, a different, not ideological, it's just a different worldview. One group of people, like myself, think, hey, I'm going to obey the rules, wear my face covering, you know, wash my hands, all this sort of good stuff. And it's one side just doesn't agree with that notion whatsoever. So it isn't really about convincing them. It's just about doing what's right for the greater good. You know what I mean? That's what I think anyway. Guidance to the letter. We stayed at home, protected the NHS, and saved thousands of lives. And while the vast majority have complied with the rules, there have been too many breaches too many opportunities for our invisible enemy to slip through undetected and this is a good thing right it's a good thing that he's just in a nation like this he went he did it in the house of commons he also did it with some press and then now he's doing this briefing to the nation i think this is good he's being forceful he's trying to be forthright he's trying to you know sort of like you know be as direct as he can but hey, where was this energy in the beginning, my friend? Where was this energy in March? Where was this energy when you were? Because prom- imagine if this was a. Imagine if there was an incentive of eat out, help out, of like save your summer with this message at the beginning. Imagine this message came to you at April, May, before the eat out, help out thing even started, and said, "Hey, if we get this number down, if we really smash this virus, if we do our best to make sure we contain this thing, here's your reward, nation." summer holidays eat i help out what all this whatever it's a freedom freedom of movement whatever that is what that's that would have been a good um that would have been a good way to combat things but instead no hands off approach common sense stay alert all these different codes and mantras and nando's alert systems and all this nonsense and people ducking interviews and now look where we are the virus has started to spread again in an exponential way a tougher package of national measures combined with the potential for tougher local restrictions for areas already in lockdown. And as for that minority who may continue to flout the rules, we will enforce those rules with tougher penalties and fines of up to £10,000. Again, I'm not just sure how um how this is going to work if they're going to actually going to work in any way shape or form because i just think there's just a divide in the country i think covid deniers are what they are and it's just it, you can't really convince them otherwise so that that's a lot of finding you're going to be doing if, if that's the case we will put more police out on the streets and use the army to backfill if necessary that is insane the tragic- they're going to use the army <laughs> So it's, if if it wasn't enough to fob in your mates or to fob in your neighbours, now nah, they're gonna have they're gonna call the army in to get you in line. And that is a madness. And if you have, if you if you saw those protests in London between the Black Lives Matter and some of the ex um some of our veterans, uh, some of our uh, military folk, then you would know. You know, if those military guys come out on the street. Um, and you happen to be of a different complexion to Boris Johnson, you might want to stay indoors. <laughs> the reality of having COVID is that your mild cough can be someone else's death knell. And if we were forced... If only he was using these analogies in the beginning. Imagine this, he was this direct in the beginning. Honestly, I know I keep stopping this, but just imagine if he was this direct in the beginning, what it could have done, the difference it could have made, the lives it could have saved. God damn it. Do you think politicians get punished for their incompetence, or is it just like a, hey, you just had a bad term and you just get over it? It's like um, it's, it feels like if you're a politician, you just end up and you do a bad job. You're like that kind of shitty actor in a soap opera. You, no one's gonna ask for you to get fired. No one's gonna throw tomatoes on you in the street. But when people see you, they know. They know you were the worst version of whatever villain that was in that series. They know. They know you was a bit of a shitty dad in a TV series. You only had one face. Right, but you just you're allowed to carry on. You just you might end up in another series. You might end up going to you know a Spanish-speaking country and doing a telenovela, but 
I think that's how politicians get treated. It's, so, it's as if like, you know, you do a really terrible job and nothing happens. You don't lose any money. You don't lose any status. You don't lose any opportunities. Your reputation doesn't suffer even in that regard. It's just, oh, he was just a, you know, he did a bad job. A bad job. This is worse than a bad job. Into a new national lockdown. That would threaten not just jobs and livelihoods, but the loving human contact on which we all depend. It would mean renewed loneliness and confinement for the elderly and vulnerable. And Bro, we're all lonely, man. I'm not elderly. I'm lonely. Like, how about us? <laughs> Ultimately, it would threaten once again the education of our children. We must do all we can to avoid going down that road again. But if people don't follow the rules we've set out, then we must reserve the right to go further. Things will be far better by the spring. Further is six months. Spring is next year. And again, I'm okay with it because that was my prediction at the beginning. I always predicted that we were going to be under some kind of lockdown or restricting the movement or kind of, you know, uh, a break from normality until the end of the year. I, again, it's just my analogy of like, you know, being in a house party and having the police come around and break it up. It never really restarts the same way. It takes a while to kind of get going. And if, and sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't kind of, the magic never returns. As soon as the police, have, even when they come and say, oh, it's okay, and they leave, the magic never returns. It's sort of like done, right? They kind of, it just what dampens the mood and sort of changes there. It changes the frequency, the vibrations in there. Same thing happens with this. I just think when a government closes an economy down and tells people to sh stay in place, shuts off different sectors, it's very difficult, if not near impossible, to get that done, to get that restarted within a six month period. So, regardless of how long this virus lasts, you always have to tack on another year to kind of getting stuff back to up to normal again. You just have to kind of, you know. Government's just moved too slow. It's too much red tape, too much bureaucracy for anything else to happen quicker than that. Even 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 the vaccine. Think how long it's going to take to vaccinate everybody when the vaccine comes around. It's not going to be like a week process. It's going to take months, months and months and months. Especially if you know, and that's just hoping there's no complications along the way. When we have not only the hope of a vaccine, but one day soon, and I must stress that we're not there yet, of mass testing so efficient that people will be able to be tested in minutes so they can do more of the things they love. That's the hope. That's the dream. If we follow he's these telling, simple rules... He's today, telling us a dream about testing and people are going to... What is it someone said the other day? Someone mentioned that they tried to get a test and they, had to, they, were, they were told to go to Aberdeen. They tried to go to Scotland to go get a test and they live in London. That was the nearest place to go get a test. Nearest. We will get through this winter together. There are unquestionably difficult months to come and the fight against COVID is by no means over. And I have no doubt, however, that there are great days ahead. But now is the time for us all to summon the, the discipline and the resolve and the spirit of togetherness that will carry us through. Man, some budget Churchill, man. F out of here, man terrible job again i don't mind that we have to do this changes it is what it is you know we're in a bad position right now we have to get it done but just the amount of time that was wasted man like if you just would have done a serious lockdown in the beginning you would have it would have appeased everybody even the covid deniers you just tell them to, to be indoors for two months shut that fuck up you give them money you know what i mean whatever it may be let them rant and rave you get us a lockdown for two months we bang it out we get the numbers down where they need to be we keep and then you know we slowly and surely open up different areas of the economy the people that are more vulnerable you you tell them to stay in place you don't push people to go back to work you just that's it working from the offices is done until a vaccine is around you know that kind of stuff but at least the economy is reopened people can still move and kind of you know business can flow supply chains are not broken blah -de blah 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 but instead look what happened hands-off approach go to mikanos go and flip in you know get yourself a, a half price um piece express you know whoever's doing even sometimes i question even the decisions people made during the whole help out you out i think but whatever at least the solution's been done in some regard we're on our way to some kind of recovery but yeah if you're in the uk let me know how you feel man six months man six months we're gonna be in lockdown six months another six months so let me know what you're feeling um out there if you're in the uk let me know what your vibe is and in the comments down below